So today I want to talk about a really unique course at the University of Cambridge. So unique in fact that it's one of the only few courses at the university that is offered part-time. It is the MST AI Ethics and Society course. It's relatively new, it only started in 2021, but very impressively it already won the Cog Exus Best Award for AI in 2022, so it's already built up quite a reputation. Saying that, the success rate for admissions has gone down over those three years. In fact, last year only 26% of applicants successfully got onto this course. However, with our expertise at the profs, with 98% of us holding a postgraduate degree and 100% of us having at least two years of experience in tutoring, we're more than adequate in helping you getting onto courses like these. So if you're interested in what we're talking about in this video, please don't hesitate to give us a call or follow the link in the description to look on our website. In the meantime, let me give you the top five tips on how to get onto this course. Tip number one that I'm gonna to give to you today is that you really want to maximize your academic edge. Now, that might be a little bit tricky to do considering that most people that go onto this course are probably working themselves, maybe already have um, a few years of professional experience working in AI. However, if you already went to a really, really good university for mathematics, that might have involved you having to take something like a step paper or an MAT or even a TMUA. Uh, we actually have other videos on this if you would like to, again, look in the description to learn how to do well on those. Um, now, in terms of the academic requirements for this course, one of them is that you need a 2-1 in your degree. However, given that it's Cambridge, realistically, you have to go for a first. If you didn't necessarily come from a background that was very, very heavy on the mathematics, we heavily recommend you take uh, additional online courses, maybe in linear algebra, in probability, in statistics, uh, and calculus are the four main areas that I would encourage you to look at to just rekindle your understanding of mathematics a little bit. On the other side of things, you also need to be strong in your social sciences. So philosophy is a must. You need to be doing regular readings of philosophy. It could even be that whilst you're at your university, you took part in essay competitions in that subject. Even if you didn't do any philosophy though, other social sciences are acceptable too to talk about, so maybe economics or sociology. As long as you can use those academic experiences to talk about how you might want to go about studying for this kind of degree, any experience is a good experience. Now moving on to tip number two, what I'm gonna suggest next is that you really lean on your professional edge as well as your academic. So as I said earlier, People on this course typically have a few years of professional work experience. So what you're going to be doing as part of this application, especially given that it's a part-time course in order to cater for people who are working, is really lean in on your professional successes, especially if they relate to AI and ethics. As a little bit of a side note, if you're looking at doing a course that is really gonna propel you in the world of business, Statistically, this is actually an easier course to get onto than the majority of MBAs out there, which actually require several more steps as part of the application process in comparison to your work experience. But we can't escape the fact that you do have to mention your work experience somewhere. As long as you talk about how that relates to AI, ethics and society in whatever aspect you can, then you are going to be able to generate a really, really good application. But let's say you're going onto this course with not a lot of work experience under your belt. It's certainly not uh, exclusive to people who've only had really, really strong professional work experience. And um, what you might want to do is you might want to take some maybe online internships in order to build your experience uh, in getting work, or maybe lean on your internships that you've taken at university. And of course, with the majority of master's courses, they want to know what your career progression is going to be. So have a look at people who have graduated from this course, look at their LinkedIn profiles, and see actually what their career progression looks like.
Now my third tip for this course is that you have to craft a compelling personal statement. Now actually from experience, crafting a really, really good personal statement takes quite a few tries. So don't expect to be able to write the perfect personal statement in one go. In fact, you're probably gonna be working on this for months. Um, now, if you want to look at general hints and tips of how to craft the perfect personal statement, we actually have a really, really good video on this in the description below. So if you're in this position, please make sure to take a look. But specifically for Cambridge and as for any other course, you want to look at their unique selling points. As I mentioned before, it's a two year part-time degree. You cannot say that about the majority of courses at Cambridge. Usually what they say is that you have to do it full time and you cannot even do a part-time job on the side. Um, what you might want to also talk about is that you will be studying in conjunction with the LCFI, um, which is actually partnered with the Institute of Continuing Education. Um, a body within Cambridge that is known to provide diplomas. So actually, if you need help with diploma applications, this is also something we can help with. Make sure to call one of our tutors for this. But on top of everything else, you need to answer the question, why Cambridge? Why go to the University of Cambridge to study this and not somewhere else? And it cannot be because you admire the reputation of the university and it cannot be because you specifically want to follow in the footsteps of one of the greats. Um, you have to go there because you value the education, you value the curriculum, you value the facilities, and you value the flexibility of the course. Moving on to tip number four, you want to be able to illustrate your expertise through your research proposal. Now, this is actually a really unique aspect of this master's course, because what they ask you to do is write a 5,000 word research proposal for something that you might be working on in your dissertation in your second year. Now, if you're a little bit out of practice with writing research proposals, we have a brilliant team of writing tutors that are very much willing to help you uh, should you need it, please go into the description or give us a call if you are in this position. For Cambridge though, what you want to be able to do is be able to write a research proposal that leans on quite a lot of different texts. If you can develop a little bit of an academic discussion or a debate between different points of view, even better. What we want to see evidence of for any course at Cambridge is an ability to be able to think critically on information that is presented. So we need to see that being present throughout the research proposal. Now I've actually worked on uh, this course before with another student of mine who actually had lots and lots of work experience already. He was the CEO of a company in Canada uh, for AI. He also had incredibly good grades, so he already fit that requirement. But what he struggled with initially was the essay writing component. And one of the reasons for this was because he didn't actually develop a plan before he ended up writing his essay. And so what I would encourage you to do before even diving in to writing that proposal is make sure you have an idea of what question you want to lean in towards, what questions you want to lean to answering, perhaps through your dissertation in your second year. So when writing your proposal, play it smart, show keen interest, show expertise, and demonstrate critical debate. Now my final tip applies to those of you who have been lucky enough to get through to the next stage of your application. If you've done well enough with your CV, your personal statement, and your research proposal, as well as all the other documentation that you needed to supply to the university, you will be asked to come back for an interview. And these cannot be taken lightly. Um, so what you will need to do first off is really make sure you revise over your CV. Those are gonna be your biggest selling points when they ask you questions about your experience both professionally and academically. Also, what you say isn't just the only important thing that comes across, is how you present yourself. So you've got to have your shoulders back, you've got to be smiling, and you've got to maintain that eye contact. Communication is very largely body language. And another thing surrounding this that I would heavily recommend to people is you want to research 
current surrounding issues involving AI and ethics. You want to be aware of everything else that's going on that might involve you looking at online articles, maybe looking back over the literature that you've referenced in your research proposal, or perhaps you met with maybe another professional in person, maybe another leader of a company or head of a department, you may have attended a conference or two in the meantime, really record these experiences, make an account of what you've learned from them, make a record of likely questions that could come up, and get a friend to practice with you, perhaps. It doesn't necessarily work as well if you're practicing in the mirror a little bit each day, though that certainly can help. Make sure you have somebody that can hold you to account. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video covering my top five tips on how to get onto this course, but it's not the only advice that we offer in terms of getting onto courses like these. In fact, given our wealth of experience and the number of tutors who have already helped students get onto courses like these, we are more sure uh, to be able to get you onto courses like these should you contact us. You can do that via many, many means. You can either phone us using uh, the number on screen or you can go onto our website in the description below in order to get more information. But until we hear from you further, best of luck with your application.